In watching television and going to the movies, you might get the impression that the great human dramas of today happen only to affluent people, people who live in and near the cities. You might say the so-called sophisticates. The truth is that real dramas are taking place every day to real people. During the recent trucker strike, I talked with some Americans that the media seems to have overlooked. About how long have you been driving a rig like this? About 15 years. Do you work for a company? No, I'm an independent. Independent driver. That means you own your own rig. Yeah, me and the bank. So what sort of investment does a rig like this take to own? About $38,000. I imagine it puts quite a bit of pressure on you making monthly payments. My wife works. What kind of work she do? She's a bartender. Well, how do you stay ahead in business? How do you get your loads lined up? Oh, independent brokers, shippers. I don't get anything while I'm just sitting. So if someone controlled the brokers and the shippers, they'd be controlling the trucking industry. They do. You told me before that uh, you carry a gun with you. Is that true? Damn right. Why do you? To protect myself. If someone tries to sneak into your cab, just show them the gun, you know, and they'll uh, mosey on down the road. Just how far would you go to protect your rig and your profession? You never know until you're put to the test. Kind of moves a lot of my ballpark. Well, we got this WT9000 Ford down here. I was telling you about it. We had to repossess it. The boy couldn't keep his payments up on it. But for the kind of money we're talking about on it, ought to be able to make you a pretty good piece of equipment. It's got a NTC350 Cummins in it, RTO9513 transmission. Still talking about an awful lot of money. Talk it over with your missus and see what she thinks. And I tell you what, I'd even throw in a paint job of your specification just to help you young folks out. broadcasting to you today from my new bucket, which will from now on be known as the Blue Mule. We're in business for ourselves, me and the mule, and we aim to get our butts out of hawk. So all you turkeys better watch out, we don't get all the work. Amen to that. Happy honky, the Blue Mule. Say, what's that you got between your legs, sonny? It's the Blue Mule, the happy honky. Got a Ford WT9000 Cummins. What are you, Hummer? Some kind of outlaw? That's right. Owner operator, gotta operate to own. Amen to that. You're acting awful blue for the half owner of a brand new truck here. You're not going to spend more time with this rig than you are with me. That's not likely. You know what they say about drinking and driving. 
even stop driving. your bucket yeah still the bank says different Same old bunch of boys out there in the dock. Isn't and it? sure it. What happened to Jack? Died. You going for work? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, hey, listen, kid. Do like I do and keep your blinders on. And stay on the highway, yeah? This ain't the ladies' room. Come on in. Well, bless my ass! Carol Joe Hubbard, you little How son you? of a bitch, you. Welcome home. How you doing, Dwayne? Ah, oh, dang, I've been expecting you since last month. Oh, the bank held me up. I got payments up to Wazoo. You know, you get fat, Dwayne. Oh, shut up. Sit down and have a drink. Hey, tell me you got your papers. Oh, money. God damn, this is a nice rig. At least it's mine. Ran to Bertie outside. Where's the... Got a new bunch of boys working for me. They get the job done. Of course, it ain't like it was when your daddy and me was a driving. Just ain't been the same since he passed away. Well, hey! You know what I got? I got you an Arizona special to Akron. I'd appreciate it if somebody find my secretary and send her into the office. I have a little bit of work for her. Here's a present for you. What's this stuff? I ain't slated to haul cigarettes. You ain't nothing but a little country boy. You just gotta have a little more patience, Pops. Look. I'll see if I can't slip the hall past Buck to you later in the week. Dwayne, don't you ever get tired of singing that same old song? Good God Almighty, do my eyes this evening. Where have they been keeping you, boy? Up in the air, Pops. How you been? Oh, come see, come saw. Mostly come saw. Uh, been lots of laying off around here. Later, Pops. I got business with Dwayne right now. Well, I'll be across the way here. You know what's your obligation goddamn gation to buy old Pops a drink? Come in. You know what's going on out there? The boys are packing contraband. Now, what are you talking about, son? Cigarettes, slot machines. Now, what's wrong with that? That's just a little bit of untaxed tobacco out there. When did all this start, Dwayne? Shoot, you gotta keep up, son. What are you telling me? I'm telling you, here's a chance to pick up a little easy piece of change. Get something nice for Jerry. Well, Dwayne, you know they catch me hauling that stuff, I'm liable to lose my license. Oh, shit, boy, be sensible. 
There ain't nobody getting hurt out yonder except Uncle Sam, and hell, he's getting too much already. How about you, Dwayne? How much you getting? Now, don't get hot with me, boy. I ain't asking you to do a goddamn thing that the rest of them ain't doing. Just we ain't trying to break the law. Just bend it a little bit. That and a piece of chain supposed to make it all right, huh? Boy, don't make it wrong. You know, good paying work ain't that easy to come by. Yeah, I know. I'm doing you a big damn favor just slotting you in here at all. I mean, I don't haul that stuff, I don't drive, huh? That's right. Just keep your mouth shut and do as you're told. You know something, Dwayne? I think you've got fat in the head, too. Don't sass me, you little son of a bitch. Let me tell you something. Times has changed. You ain't gonna get any place pulling your flyboy heroics around here. Well, I'll tell you what. Times may have changed, but I ain't. You can just take your Arizona special and shove it right back up the cow's ass. You're about to walk off a cliff, boy. There's a whole lot more to this than just you and me. Unload it. All of it. Well, I'm going where the water tastes like wine. Got a whiskey and a brew. You're new around here, aren't you? Something sure is. And it's wine sitting right next to it. So, Pops, uh, fill him up with goddamn geisha. Soon as, um, oh, you got your father's uh, good taste for whiskey. <laughs> Connell, you remember Carol Joe, don't you? Yeah, I remember him. Oh, you cut that lady. mess out. Pops, should not his daddy's nigger no more. And I ain't got to kiss his ass. Hey, look, man. The only thing that you and I have in common is that we're both competing for the same job. Understand? And if you wait for invitation, it ain't coming. Oh, okay. damn, y'all. Come on, let's go. Yes, I... Don't pay no attention to that amateur Mal Malice. We got enough trouble around here without their foolishness. Well, I'm finding out. We're just shoving this shit back up the cow's ass, sugar plum. <laughs> Now, you learned your lesson, darling. And why don't you go back to Mommy and tell her, when you grow up some, we'll let you play with the big trucks. Get your hand off my shoulder. What do you say, partner? Oh! Well, Mr. Carroll Joe Hummer, I heard you were back. What is this, Bob, a social call? Not really. I just thought I'd take a look at this new rig you've been bragging about. It's mighty nice. What does it set you back? I'd rather not see right now. You in a hurry? No. That's good, because I'd hate to have to give you a speeding ticket. Of course, I could cite you for using foul language over that two-way radio of yours. You know that, don't you? Improper inflation. Now, that's dangerous. Six, you know five, better than that. Three, four, 11 in progress at Speedway. Well, that's Mama four. call me. And when Mama calls, I got to come and run. What the hell are you doing, Bob? You know me. Just hold it right there. And you stay put.
Pick him up. What you got? Got some apples and some tangerines. I bet you got one of them hard apples. You know I hate them. I got some soft ones, boy. You can gum these. Yeah, well, get one out for me. Hey, did I ever tell you the one about the peach picker? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you told me that. You know, there was, was this peach picker. He was supposed to be the expert squeeze, did you? Now, this farmer had this wife. She had it is on her biggest candle. Pops, I already heard yeah. the joke before. It wasn't it funny? Yeah, it was funny. Well, what's wrong with hearing the second time? It won't be funny a second time. Why not? Because I already heard the joke. I know the punchline. It's not going to be any surprise to me. I, I won't laugh. Why not? Because it won't be funny. Look, I laugh at your jokes when you tell them. Yeah, well, I'm not going to laugh at this joke. Oh, well, I'm going to tell it anyhow. This farmer had his wife. And she had she titties on her as big as cantaloupe. cantaloupe. I know already. Yeah, well, I think you're losing your sense of humor. Yeah, well, I think you get to see now. Watch your mouth, boy. Ain't that Carol Jones rig up there? Hey, Pop, hey, let, let's just get out of here, man. Whatever it is, it's between him and them. You ain't got nothing to do with it. I have to like the kid, all right? Business or broads? Buck, what the hell do you think you're doing? Just slow down. Just slow down. Don't get your bowels in an uproar. Now, what's the idea of busting that boy's ribs? Oh, Clem just kind of took a personal interest in that one's all. Well, damn it, you've gone too far this time. What's eating you? Never bothered you them other time. Well, hell, the boy's practically family. Why, oh, me and his daddy used to... Now, I understand. I see what you're driving at. Now, what do you figure them ribs is worth? 100? 200? Now tell me, Dwayne, 250? Dwayne! I don't think you ought to be socializing with that boy while he's nursing them ribs. Driver Bob Herbst requested that one for Nadine. Makes that mmm -hmm good trucker stew. And now, for all you truck. She's doing. Humans can't work that fast. I mean, she. Come here, honey. Come on, say hello. You're so lucky you don't have to work. Yes. Just gets too confusing around there. Well, I gotta get a job where I can use my brain. This assembly line stuff. Oh, spaghetti again. I'm going for work tomorrow. Oh, honey, the doctor said that you wouldn't. Be I don't ready. give a damn what the doctor says. He doesn't have to come up with a two thousand dollar payment for the bank this month. 
not going to heal your ribs any faster. Hon, look, if we lose that rig out there, we lose everything we've been hoping for. Not going to go back to that place, Red River, are you? Good paying work's more important right now. Not hungry, huh? Good morning. I hear you're hiring. Carol Johanna. Then you heard wrong. We ain't got no loads today. None all week. You know anybody might be short? Sure don't. Thanks. Howdy. I'm an owner operator looking for work. You've come to the right place, mister. See Mr. Fogel in the corner office. Thank you. We're the owner of the Light Green 66 Rambler Station Wagon. Please come to the reception. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to lease out my truck. Henry Vogel. Carol Joe Hummer. Oh, well, we own the uh, lease by the year. The girl out there said you was looking for drivers. She don't run this company. Well, who does? I do. I see. trailer going? Dallas. Thanks. Bless my ass. Ain't that right, Dwayne? Be careful that goddamn thing. Now, look, boy, I was a dirty son of a bitch that had a muss up your rig, but I never had nothing to do with the rest of that. You just sign me that Dallas load. I can't. Buck, they'll kill me. Who's Buck? Come on, hire. Come on, hire. Hey, you ain't got nothing there to be ashamed of. You wait outside for us, wee Janie? Close the door. Who the hell are you? Give him the work order. Find a roost, Dwayne. Sign it. Sign it! All right, boy. You want work? You got it. Set up the, uh, what's the name of your rig? The Blue Mule. Set up the Blue Mule for Dallas. Uh, we pay on delivery. 
You're damn right you do.
driver. Be careful, son. You have yourself a good time? Not bad. Let's get going. Got a lot to do. Oh, man. Ain't nothing wrong with the way you're getting paid, is it? Oh, I don't know. It's just getting so there ain't enough pay anymore to keep on laying that old goat. Well, everybody ain't lucky enough to enjoy his line of work. <laughs> <laughs> Adelaide, I told you to hold the calls. Last house on five, Mr. Wessel. Thank you. You got Buck? Buck? Uh, could you hold on just a minute, Mr. Cutler? Yeah, sure thing. Get Clem in here. How things to the house? Fine, fine. What's going on up there, Buck? That order of cigarettes ain't got to Galveston. You've never been late before. Now, I hope it's nothing you can't handle. Oh, I can handle it. Jigaboos and white trash is all I'm getting on it right now. Yes, sir, what we got here is a sure case of improper inflation. And I'm an expert on the subject. You truck drivers never learn. Now, take this tire. Now, that's dangerous. Oh, come on, Bobby, them tires are fine, and you damn well know it. I sure do. Now, don't you quote me on that. Ah, 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 temper, temper. You know, Bob, it's guys like you to give the police department a bad name. Ain't that the truth? Well, look at his ear. Howdy, Clem. How you say it, Bob? You know, these paperwoods left part of their load down by the road a piece. <gasps> Thought we'd bring it to him. That's my knife for you to help the boys out like that. Hey, I got some stuff in the truck. You want to help me load it up? No, you got your job, and I got mine. What do you want, a vacation? I think it's time you went home. Well, you say we have a smoke on Buck Wessel and the rest of them turkeys, huh?
boys enjoying the party? Good. That's good. And this must be uh, Mrs. Hummel. That's right. Come on, let's play some pool. Hey, you know, that guy Buck is more free to you than you are him. Why don't you come on over here and join us for a drink? Every day in the sun, huh, Pops? <laughs> it's been 20 long years coming, and I ain't enjoying it. Even though he gave it to you. Oh, I mean, as particular as you is. You stupid old man. You think that he's gonna get you what? He's only gonna get you dead, man. Jumps the Scotsman and he says, Walk proudly, man, walk proudly. <laughs> My out there, full of tide. See how you stand it here. It's a hell of a place to hold me. So what's all this you got up there, Buck? Some kind of rigorous revolution? What I got up there is cigarettes and slots out the ass. First, some hero goody goody ain't trucking them. Next thing you know, he got an old nigger and some crackers carrying on like they above the law. I tell you, Dwayne's behind this. And Dwayne's running scared. Got more respect for that old nigger than he has for the glass house. Why don't you throw me the ball on this one? What do you got in mind, Roy? Oh, a little friend of persuasion. Now, uh, Buck, what'd you say this hero's name was again? Hummer. Carol Joe Hummer. Honey, what college did I go to? You didn't. P-I-M-N. You gotta be careful to check on that sometime. No, they never check. Previous experience. Hmm. What kind of previous experience are you supposed to have to be a nursery school teacher? I don't know, but you ain't got any. I could say that I worked in an orphanage. Oh, uh, Daycare center. Gotta say daycare center. Hello? Carol Joe, this is Dwayne. Hey, something come up and old Buck and them's up in Scottsdale. Yeah, what you got this time? There's a double rigger of Mexican avocados coming through here jackknife. It won't get somebody to haul them on into Salt Lake City. It's plum whipped cream. What kind of money are we talking about? Two grand and some change if you can lay it in there by noon tomorrow. Pay on delivery. You better be on the level, Dwayne. Oh, honest to God, boy. Uh, meet them out east on I-10. Toe will help you hook up. I promised them that you'd haul ass and get that stuff in there before it goes soft. All right, you got your boy. Hey, have a good trip. Coffee break? 
How far to the next truck stop? You got a triple D about a mile down the road. Hey, hon, would you get me a cup of coffee to go in a great big hurry? You betcha. What are you carrying? Got 5,000 pounds of avocados. Got to get into Salt Lake City by noon tomorrow. Else tonight's just a big sightseeing tour. Damn, brother, someone sure busting your balls. Well, I ain't got me no inheritance, you know. Uncle Sam's not going to give you one, either. He sure ain't. Here you go, Carol Joe. Thank you. Uh-huh. Oh, you Hummer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this on me, Hummer. Thank you. See you later. Tell him, Jamie. The last thing I need is him working 20 hours a day, seven days a week, and that's exactly what he's going to do when he finds out. Sooner or later, you got to tell him. You know that. I want to borrow some money from you, Jamie. I think that I want to get an abortion. And I think it's the best thing. There's lots of time for us to have a family. We're just going to have to wait till things get better. See, if I have the baby, I'm going to have to quit my job. Now, how are we going to get by if I'm not working? You can't do this all by yourself. You've got to talk to CJ about it. But see, if I tell Carol Joe, he's going to want to keep the baby. He wants a family so bad. I know. And now is just not the right time. It's... I'm not going to have him on the road all the time.
Hey, how you doing? About a half hour late, aren't you? I've been pushing her awful hard. Yeah, it's still pretty good time. You like them avocados, huh? Hmm? I can't stand them myself. My wife, she, uh, she likes them. She makes that green Mexican stuff. They put them Fritos in. Tastes like green piss to me. Hey, Joe, Bob. Get a load of this. Damn, they must have been picked a year ago. What a waste of diesel. I don't know what Dwayne's doing down there. Oh, Dwayne, watch the road! <laughs> Good night! I'd a whole lot rather watch you shoot. <gasps> hey, you know what I got for you? No, what you got for me? Let me show you. Oh, Dwayne, gee! <laughs> How about that? Well, you know I'm on a diet. Come all the way from Europe. Well, big deal. That'll make it good. No, but it sure makes them expensive. Uh, inside is good. That just tastes like old Kirsty. That's the biggest cherry I ever ate. Hey, you still got your cherry? Oh, wine. I bet you got the box it come in. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> uh, hey, tell me, honey. Why'd you bring me clear out here? What's the matter, Dwayne? Don't you like surprises? I sure do. <laughs> well, it's gonna be a real surprise. Ha! hours hauling rotten produce for nothing, and I sucked it up like a two-bit turkey. Oh, God. Why don't you go on home? I ain't yes. leaving here till I see Dwayne Howard. Right, well, Jerry thinks I'm coming home with $2,000 in my pocket. I got Not nothing. Now. Thought that fat son of a bitch was a friend of mine. Come on, CJ, let's go home. Jerry's waiting to talk to you, and you need some rest. I ain't going. Come on, it's no good. Deputy Sheriff, and you're under arrest. Oh, what is it this time, Get Bob? back. Hands on the bar, spread your legs. What the hell is this? Get on the bar. You're under arrest for the murder of Dwayne Haller. What the hell are you freezing? We got an eyewitness. Case up in Prescott. Might as well give a listen to what I got to say, Hummer. Look, son, for the money we pay in, Perry Mason ain't likely to walk through that door. Talk to the scum who calls himself the public prosecutor. Wants to make a deal with you, Hummer. Says he'll get the grand jury to indict you on involuntary manslaughter. Means you'll spend six months chucking bricks on the county farm. But if you ain't buying that, you're looking at murder one. And that means 30 years punching license plates at Florence. What about the trial? Well, that comes after the grand jury sets down the indictment. But let me tell you, you got an Ice Cube's chance in hell of getting justice in that court. The last thing they want is your ass back out in that highway organizing them drivers. What the hell are you talking about, organizing? It ain't gonna do no one no good you going to jail for 30 years. Least of all me. If I go away for six months, we can forget about the family and everything else we've been planning. The bank ain't gonna wait. The bank? You're talking as if the bank runs our lives. Well, don't they? No, they don't. Just take the deal, please. Take the deal and let's get the hell away from here. There's a lot more to this than just what happens to us. What about this grand jury? They like a regular jury? 16 of your peers, signed, sealed, and delivered.
just like the Constitution says. In your practical opinion, Mr. Davidson, you would say that Mr. Hummer had been drinking long before he entered the bar where you were. I certainly would. And once again, he was speaking threateningly of Mr. Haller? That's what I said. Thank you. <sighs> Mrs. Forelady and members of the jury, You've heard four witnesses who saw Mr. Hummer enter Dwayne Haller's office and threaten him with a gun. You've heard the arresting officer's testimony as to the violent nature of Mr. Hummer. And you've just heard that he had been drinking heavily on that evening. Now we present an eyewitness who saw Dwayne Haller run down by the accused. You saw the running down of Dwayne Haller, did you not? I did, sir. How did you happen to be riding on that stretch of the road that afternoon? Oh, I recently received a rather large inheritance, and I was investigating the land in your area for potential investment. Describe what you saw. A um, man was trying to fix a flat tire, and as he was waving down a truck to give him a hand, he stepped out onto the road, and the truck ran right into him and continued on the road. What did you do? I, I made a mental note of the license number, and then I went directly to the police. It was obvious there was no helping the poor man. Can you identify these uh, photos? Well, this looks like the man with the flat tire. And that is definitely the truck that ran him over. I couldn't help but note the name. Thank you, Mr. Miller. You may step down. I think I'd like to ask Mr. Miller a question or two. What kind of property around here were you looking for, Mr. Miller? I was looking at land primarily as an investment for the future. I hasten to remind our distinguished forelady that the purpose of this proceeding is not to establish the guilt or innocence of the accused, but rather to determine whether or not there is probable cause to warrant a trial. <laughs> Finally, we'll call uh, Mrs. Hummer to the stand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. I remind you, that Mrs. Hummer was told that she did not have to testify against her husband. Now, Mrs. Hummer, all of us understand how difficult it is for you to give evidence, and the court appreciates your desire to get all the facts out, no matter how painful they might be. In your own words, will you tell us about the phone conversation between Dwayne Howler and your husband? Dwayne Call offered Carol uh, Excuse me, Mrs. Hummer. Uh, speak up, please, Mrs. Hummer, uh, so the jury can hear you. Dwayne called and offered Carol Joe a load because a rig jackknifed down the road and, and they needed someone to drive it on through. And what exactly did your husband say? He said that Dwayne better be on the level. Those were his exact words? Well, I can only tell you what I heard. Uh, just a simple yes or no. Yes. Thank you. My husband didn't kill anybody. He didn't kill Dwayne. Carol Joe had a right to be wary of Dwayne. It was Dwayne had Carol Joe come to him in the, in the first place for a job, and when he come home, it was with busted ribs. He couldn't work, and I was working double shifts, and... Thank you, Mrs. Hummer. Please, I'd like to say something else if I can. Certainly. Go right ahead. See, I didn't want this. I didn't want to come here. I didn't want this in the first place. See, they offered Carol Joe a deal that if he went to jail for six months, then we could leave here and we could start our family elsewhere. That's what I wanted. You see, Carol Joe, he figured that in six months or 30 years, it wouldn't make a difference to them. So they wanted him so bad that they wouldn't quit until they had him in a place where he couldn't fight back.
All right, what is it? You were lucky today, Carol Jo. Damn lucky. I was innocent. Christ. Who the hell do you think got you off? The Tooth Fairy? Truth got me off. I got you off! And next time, you just might not be so lucky. I ain't looking forward to raising our kid alone. And don't you understand that we're finally making a place for ourselves with all that happened here today? We have a place for ourselves. Being together and raising a family was what was most important to us. Still is. Is it? Hell, yes, it is. Look, I don't want to raise our kids knowing that their daddy left a fight half fought. You're just so damn impressed with yourself, you can't even hear what I'm saying. Well, what the hell are you saying? Stop the car. You quit acting so damn crazy. Stop the car, I said. I don't want to be with you. Stop the goddamn car! <laughs> Watch a car, Buck. Good idea blowing my game. I got a 500 buck Nassau going with the governor's nephew. Well, Roy almost blew our game today at that so-called trial. Cross, I scraped our cat houses clean, lined up a bunch of cow brains for the jury, but Norm here couldn't even get his story now, straight. Now, wait a minute, Roy. It wasn't my idea to put that hum oh, lady shut on up, the stand. Norm, shut up, Shut up. Who the hell are you? What well, you remember, Norm. He was the witness for us in the Montana case. Get him out of here. Oh, wait a minute. Get on this out of here. This isn't getting us anywhere. Look, we got a problem. Yeah, pretty soon every trucker's gonna start believing in our goddamn union. They all think they got the God-given right to hold what they want to, when they want to. And this is gonna give the green light to a lot of horses' asses, think they can run their business without dealing with the glass. All house. right, fellas, this Hummer business has gone far enough.
know things must have been pretty awful in jail. Not that. I always thought of myself as a strong man, but I can't be fighting the whole world and you at the same time. I know. And I don't mean it to be that way. I, I just... You don't have to say anything. I do. I'm pregnant, Carol Jo. And I've been thinking I wish I weren't. I was always planning on having a family. Just getting started a little bit early, that's all. Money will come. It's just not going to have you working all the time. Bank ain't going to keep me away from you and our family. I don't give a damn if I'm in debt till the day I die. party. I knew there was going to be a tar baby coming. Well, I think I know why he's here. Revenge. Ain't that right, boy? Yeah. Only we call it justice.
gentlemen of the road, before you go jump to any conclusions, let's take a look at the facts. Fact one, we're responsible for more housing development and land reclamation in this here area than a lot of outfits you think are real big. Fact two, you can't drive down a Perhaps highway in this state, I don't care, in private, Mr. Hummel. that hasn't Surely. been partially paid for by this here company. Fact three, our interest in oil and minerals help keep your trucks moving on down the road, I can say. We all admire the way you handle Buck and his boys. They play rough. So can we. Clearly, Mr. Hummer. That's why we'd like to offer you a proposition. Well, we came here to talk to you, Mr. Cutler. That you will. But hear me out. We had a very profitable arrangement with Buck. We'd like to see the same kind of thing with you. I can tell you it'd be very beneficial to your drivers. Now, don't decide right away. Why don't you stay here with us a few days, get to know some of the boys and gals. I believe you've already decided, Mr. Cutler. You're a very charismatic man, Mr. Hummer. What you want is going to go a long way to deciding what they want. As a member of the Glass House, you'll be in a position to help truck drivers all over the state. You get my meaning? We know the things you have to have to have the good life. You take your children. You want to send them on to college. Name any schoolhouse in America. I think we can offer you some additional advantages other than I've already discussed with you. First, we've got Hold a great... Hold it, We all came here today to tell these fellas to stay the hell out of our business. That we want to make our livings without anyone from the state, Uncle Sam, or the glass house telling us what to do. But Mr. Cutler here has seen fit to offer me a job because he feels like I have some influence over you. So I'm asking you, do we want to go to work for the glass house and surely make a lot of money? Or do we want to work for ourselves and take our chances? I guess you all know what mind I'm of. Anybody here feels any different, now it's time to speak up. Well, gentlemen, it's a big state, 14 counties. I don't suppose it would hurt very much if we was only operating in 13 of them. We don't aim to go into competition with you, Mr. Cutler. You're a fine, sensible man, Mr. Hummer. I can see that. There won't be any more Buck Wessels, I can assure you. And remember, our door will always be open for you down here at the glass house. Wallpaper the hall with your head. Next time I'll throw my hat in the door first. Any trouble? Nah. So tell me, they give the hero a big welcome. Red carpet treatment. That don't mean much. Well, that don't mean shit. I know that bunch of scum. They'll slip another Buck Wesley in on us. I don't mean they're gonna mess with us. Well, I'll see you later. And what about me? Can I still mess with you? Anytime you want.
Honey? Mr. Hummer, I think you should speak with the doctor. Mr. Hummer, you were advised to talk to me before you went in to see your wife. I don't need no permit to see my wife. Well, we could have explained. You see, she's under heavy sedation now. But we do expect that you'll be able to lead a normal life. The baby aborted. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid that your wife's not going to be able to have any more children. This is. You call him and tell him I'm coming here. Two five to two one three four eight four eight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry about your car, Bob. Dusty, what are my appointments? The usual with Roy this evening. I have confirmed your reservations, and with Joe Dante at five. Yeah, fine. Get Sam Nedro. Tell him I have Tucson troubles on the way. Tell him to get on it. Take care of it personal. And honey, be sure and tell Sam I said personal. Got that? in front of $30 million of private property. You're here to protect it. Now, when that truck comes down that drive, it's trespassing. Anything you do then is legal. Stop him. Do whatever it takes. Take your position. Oh, 
On a normal day, this truck stop would be loaded with the big diesels, carrying food to the markets, steel to the factories, lumber to the mills, and more. But this is not a normal day. Today, Arizona's truckers are on strike. But they're not on strike for wages, or for hours, or for benefits. They're on strike for a man, Carol Joe Hummer. Let's go outside for a minute. There's something you ought to see. Dr. Reeves, Dr. Reeves, Carol. 